Sorry. I will begin with a word of prayer. So, Dearly Father, we uh, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these students. Just ask that you guide our steps today, Lord, and uh, just let us uh, glorify you in what we do, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's see here. So, uh, <clears throat> Where was I? Example. I wanted to work the uh, week 12 problem on decibels for you guys. It's just like example one for us. This is like number five from week 12. And so here it is. A um, find the decibel rating, which is D equal to 10 log of I over I naught. All right, um, given I equals to for me, 10,000 I naught. Now for you, you might have a different number there. All right, that's part A. And then part B um, is this. If we triple I to I2 equal to 30,000 I naught, then by um, how much is um, the decibel rating increased? All right, so this is a, a problem. Um, and uh, so the a decibel rating is, is based on a log scale. So, um, so something I always bring up um, just as a means of discussion about like why are we using decibels like what's this about do you guys know so like um, intensity of light is a measure of like energy per unit area time something like that right so like how many joules of you know electromagnetic energy do you, does hits you like per for a given unit of area for a given unit of time so if you talked about intensity like the intensity of light in this room right versus the intensity of light say outside what, what do you think I mean, obviously outside and a sunny day is brighter. How, how many times brighter do you think it is in terms of intensity? Well, you think maybe maybe uh, five times, six times, what do you think? Does that seem reasonable? No. No? What's the answer? A hundred times? Just like, no, just the size of it compared to like light room. Uh-huh. But well, the, the light of the sun goes over the whole Earth, though, so it's, yeah, it's like more of it. But I hear what you're saying. But the answer is something like 10,000 times. It's like 10,000 times brighter outside than it is in here, something like that. So the thing is, our eyes have the ability to like sense light over an incredibly large range of intensities, right? And the same is true for sound. Um, you know, you could compare. Like me talking to you right now might be 30 decibels of sound, something like that. A jet engine noise is something like 120 decibels, right? It's not that the jet engine is four times louder than me, right? It's hundreds of times louder than me in terms of intensity, in terms of like energy per square area of sound energy that's you know being delivered. Um, so we use a decibel scale for things when we want to compare different... Um, different happenings where the, the data that you're looking at is, is over orders of magnitude separated, right? If you use a log scale, it makes orders of magnitude just different by like units. So using taking the log of data um, makes things comp comparable, which would otherwise be really difficult to directly compare, you know? Um, so this is why we use decibel ratings. And it's one of the big reasons that we talk about logs, actually, is such scales, right? So, like, if you, um, if 
you buy an antenna, the gain rate on an antenna will be given in terms of decibels. Um, like I said, you know, headphones, decibels, right? You see decibel unit measurement used a lot of places. It's a log scale and it's always done um, in reference to some like reference intensity of some sort or another, okay? So anyway, just, just some background. So how do we do part A? Like the math here is not hard at all, you know, the math here is pretty easy. All you got to do is plug in what you're given. So we do 10 log of, what was it? Like, let me simplify this. What is 10,000 I naught? It's 10 to the, let's see here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 10 to the 4th I naught, yeah? So I'm calculating 10 to the 4th times I naught. I divide by I naught, right? They cancel. And you just got 10 times the log of 10 to the 4th. Now, th what is log unadorned? Well, that's the common log, right? That is log base 10 by assumption here. So what is that equal to? This is 4, right? So we get 40. 40 is the decibel rating for part A. For part B, let's call it D2, we do 10 log of 30,000. Now 30,000 we could say is what? It's really, you know, 3 times 10 to the 4th I naught, right? So if we have log of 3 times 10 to the 4th I naught divided by I naught, um, a nice way to do this calculation is use properties of logs, yeah? So properties of logs say that that's 3 plus 10 times log of 10 to the 4th, right? Remember the log property, the log of a product is the, let me write them up here again. We should remember these. Log of AB is log of A plus log B, right? Log of A to the power P is P log A. What's the other one? Log of A over B. You need to memorize these, you know? Make sure you know them and how to apply them. That's kind of your job right now in this course is learning how to apply those. So, you know, I cancel the I-naughts. I've got 3 times 10 to the 4th, so I've got log of 3 and then log of 10 to the 4th. I already know that that's, so the, the second term here is the 40, right? So this right here works out to 40, right? And so this is the increase, right? Anyway, if you work this out, if you work this out here, if I can find my calculator, we got uh, 10 times the log of 3. That's about, come on, 4.771 plus 40. So D2 is 44.77, something like that. Now that's not the answer, right? Because what did it ask? This, it asked by what, how much did the decibel rating increase, right? So what's the increase here? So that would be like D2 minus D, right? So that's 44.77 minus 40, which as I was saying, is just 4.77. That's the increase. Now that would not be the right answer though, because if we read the question carefully, what does it say? Let me, let me find it for us here. I'll read it. Here's what it says. It says, the decibel rating of sound increases by about fill in the blocks, fill in the box decibels, right? And then parentheses round to the nearest integer as needed. So what should the answer be if we have to round to the nearest integer? We put five, right? So the answer here would be five. Um, I'll do one more of these guys. So example two is on the Richter scale. And the Richter scale is again a log scale and the Richter scale works on the formula um, 10 times the log of the intensity over um, I naught and you're given that I is equal to 100 million 
I not? All right, and then the question is, how many, what, what, what do you get on the Richter scale? All right, you guys have heard of Richter scale in the news before, right? Yeah, it's a log scale. Now, the, the rest of the fine print in the problem is you're measuring the intensity with a seismograph 100 kilometers from the, epi, the epicenter of the um, epicenter of the earthquake. That's how this measurement has to be made. That's the rule. And, um, you know, um, and it's with respect to some standard intensity of vibration as is, you know, agreed upon by the people who, uh, you know, set the scale on these seismographs. I don't know the, I don't know the details about how I naught is defined for a seismograph or anything like that, but there it is. So what's the answer here? We, we just need to calculate that. Now, before I do the calculation, make my life a little bit easier. What is this? This is one, two, three, four. Oops. I'm counting off the screen. You guys know I'm a, my own worst cameraman. Watch me on this. All right, so we've got how many powers of 10 here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is 10 to the eighth I naught, right? So if I calculate 10 log of 10 to the eighth I naught over I naught, the I naughts cancel again, right? And we've got log of 10 to the eighth, which is just equal to what? Eight. Yep, there you go. So this, for my problem, I would have an eight on the Richter scale. So that's, that's, a, that's a bad one, isn't it? <laughs> We, if we had an earthquake of, uh, if we had an eight on the Richter scale earthquake in Virginia, it would be bad. I definitely wouldn't want to be in this building, that's for sure. <laughs> have, you, have, you ever guys, have you guys ever noticed the, uh, the equator of this building? If you pay attention, in the middle of this building there is a metal strip that runs from one side of it all the way to the other. It's, it's in all the offices. Like I used to have an office which was on the equator. You're always like walking over this thing. If you look for it, it, you'll find it in the hall. And you can tell when you're in the middle of the building, wherever you are in this building, if you find that strip. Fun fact. Um, this building is unusual. Like this building was used, like the, the first floor I think was used before they built the second. And then they built the second floor and they used like the first two floors before they built, before they used the third and the fourth floors. Then I think when I got here we were using the third floor but not the fourth. And then like they finished the fourth floor. And like there was a time where you could like go up and poke your head out the elevator and look at the whole fourth floor without like wall divisions. It's crazy how big this place is. Like if you just see the whole floor in DeMoss all at once, it's really it's staggering. Um, and then, of course, they built the maze that is the fourth, fourth floor <laughs> that we've all suffered through, right? We all, we all have run into visitors like, where is 40 blah, blah, blah? It's like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Good luck to you, sir. Um, anyway, so here, let's do number eight because I haven't done one quite like this, and I think this would be good practice for us. So this one's a little bit different. So it has let you equal to natural log of A and V equals to natural log of B. I, I like this problem. I like the format of it because it makes you think a little bit, all right? So we're defining U and V to be log A and log B, all right? That's the, that's the thing. And here's the ins instructions. We're supposed to write the expression. For me, it's the, the natural log of the square root of A squared over b cubed um, in terms of u and v. All right, and it also says no lat no, you're not allowed a natural log in your answer, okay? So we're supposed to be able to write the answer just in terms of u and v. Let's see how we do that, all right? I think this is a, this is a really good problem to um, hone our skills on the laws of logarithms, yeah? Let's do it. So you guys get me started. How do I start? I mean, I'll start by writing the expression. You, you give me the next step. Right? That's natural log of what? 
Uh, I'll make another step here. A squared over B cubed, right? To the what? To the what? One half, right? It's the one half power, right? So my first move is to pull the half down, right? So I have, by property two, one half natural log of a squared over b cubed. Now what, what can I do next? I can use property three, right? I can rewrite the natural log of the quotient as the difference of the log of the numerator, which is a squared, and the log of the denominator, which in this case is b cubed. Parentheses are your friend. Be careful that that half has to multiply both terms, right? So I used, you know, number three over here, right? Then, um, then I can pull the powers down, right? So the, um, I think I'm getting eraser dust in my eye. Itchy. So this we can pull out to here, and that we can pull out to there. Oops, out to, out to here, right? And so what do we get? We get. One half, two log, two log A, minus three log B, close parentheses. Right? Now what? What are we told? We're told U is log A, right? And V is log B. So what do we do? Put those in, right? So this is what? Well, I'll simplify one more step. That's log A minus three halves log B. Right, which is exactly u minus three halves v, and there you go. That would be the answer for this problem. Any questions? Okay. All right, let's chew on some log problems here. So I don't think, did I do number 21 in here yet? Well, let me write it up, see if you guys recognize it or not. I did number 19, didn't I? I think I did number 19 in here. I don't think I've done, I did number 20 too, didn't I? The one that was like log x plus log x to the ninth equals 20. Did I do that one? I think I did that one in here. So I'm going I'm to do number 21. Um, so number 21 is log base 6 of x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 2. All right, how do you, how do you solve this? What's the natural enemy of the exponential, I mean, excuse me, of the logarithm? So we got, what we can do is just take the uh, exponentiate both sides base 6 like this. 6 to the log base 6 equals 6 to the square like that, yeah? And remember that the 6 raising, you know, the exponential base 6 and log base 6, these are inverse functions, right? So those cancel and what we're left with is x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 36, right? And so foil that out, you got yourself a uh, x squared plus x minus 6 minus 36 equal to 0, which gives you x squared plus x minus 42 equal to 0, which we can factor. I'll let you guys catch up with me. You factor. You tell me how to factor it once you get there. Oh man, I am the worst. 
least I didn't erase it before I moved it this time. So there's that. Small victories. So could you guys factor it? What do you think? Aw, oh, man, I just erased my log properties. Now I'll never know them. Six and seven. Negative six and positive seven. There we go. Then what? What's the solution then? Man, this board is this board is such a mess. Goodness gracious. So I heard the the solution then is negative six and positive seven. Um, do those make sense if you plug them back in the original equation? I think they do, right? If we plug in, so we have x equals 6 or x equals minus 7, right? Notice that x plus 3 times x minus 2 so if we put x equals to 6, what do we get there? We get 9 times 4, right? Which is positive, right? If we put x equals to minus 7, and we plug that into x plus 3 times x minus 2, what do we get? We get minus 4 times minus 9, right? Which is, which is again, 36, which is, you know, still, still positive. It is important when we solve equations involving logs that we check back our original equation and make sure that the answers we found, if we plug them into the original equation, they actually make sense, all right? It can happen with problems similar to this, not like quite this one, but problems quite similar to this that we work through this method of solution and we find answers which are not actually answers to our given problem. Like here, let me show you one that's really, really similar to this problem but only has, one, only has one solution. So like example five, I'm just gonna basically take my, this one, and like instead start it in a different point. I'm gonna say, well, suppose you had log base six of x plus three plus log base six of x minus two equals to two, right? What if you were gonna solve this equation? It's a different, it's a different equation, right? What happens? How would you solve that? Well, how I would solve it would be I would combine the logarithms using the property of logs, right? So like this is log base 6 of x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 2, right? At which point, what happens? I go back and I do all the same steps I just made in example five, example four, right? Now it's the same problem, right? So da 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 da, same steps as example four, you know, same steps as example four, and what do we get? We get all the way to x our solution, namely x equals six or x equals minus seven, right? But what's the difference? Now, when I go back and I try to check those answers in my problem, one of them is allowed, one of them is not, right? See, now I have, to, I have to give this solution here the boot. Say, nope, that is not, um, you know, not defined for, you know, log of minus seven plus three and log of, you know, minus, it, it only has to break one of them. It doesn't have to break both, but this breaks both. We have log of a negative number. Those are, you cannot take the log of a negative number. All right. So therefore, my example five has just one answer. So minus seven is an extraneous solution there. And the answer is just six. How would you get a problem which just had minus seven as an answer, but didn't have six? See this, if I did this, if I look at, you know, 
um, log base 6 of, you know, um, uh, minus x minus 3 plus log base 6 of 2 minus x equals to 2. So what I did was I multiplied both of the factors in the previous one by minus 1. And so like when you combine these two, you will again <laughs> get back to example 4. You'll again get to example 4 here. Right, when I put these together, I still get log base 6 of, you know, minus x plus 3 times minus x minus 2. But the minuses cancel, see? The minuses cancel, and we're back again to the same mathematics as example 4, which means dot, 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 by example 4, you'll get x equals to what? Again, we get x equals to 6, or x equals to minus 7. But this time, the tables have turned. 6 is not allowed. If I plug 6 into the initial equation, I've got log of a negative number. See that? Plug x equals 6 up in here, I get minus 6 minus 3, I get log of minus 9. You can't do that. 2 minus 6, I get log of minus 4. You can't do that. So 6 here is extraneous. And the answer would be x equals minus 7 because when I take this minus 7 and I plug it back up in here, I get minus 7, minus a minus 7, minus 3, which is 4. And I get 2 minus a minus 7, which is 9. So, I just wanted to hammer away on this one example to try to show you like what's going on. There's a lot that's happening in this one example. This is much akin to the phenomena we saw before where when we square an equation, we do what? We end up adding in negative solutions that weren't there before because when you square something, it, it get, like, gets rid of minuses. In the same sense, when we use properties of logs, see, when you, when you combine logs like this, you're assuming that the inputs to the logs were both positive to make that step. But the thing is, if they're actually both negative, then you still, the thing is, if they're both negative, what you have at the end is defined, and yet when you try to go back up, it's not defined. So it, this is, it's, it, I, it's a situation here similar to that, that thing we faced before when we square an equation and we end up adding new solutions, right? So long story short, all these log problems, you've got to check your answer. That, that's, that's the takeaway message from all this, okay? And how do you check the answer? You can't just look at it and go, oh, it's positive so that the log makes sense. Oh, it's negative so the log doesn't make sense. That's not how it works. You have to take the number and logically put it back into the original equation and see whether or not that makes sense, right? That's the judge, the initial equation. Do you guys have any questions about a particular problem? Um, What's that? 21. 21? 29. Oh, 29. not expecting 29. Let's see here, example 6. It's got a bunch of writing, doesn't it? Uh, example 7. seven. Yeah, this is, we say Saturday's homework? I think, I think that's accurate. T0 plus T1 minus T0 times 7 to the minus k little t, right? And what are we supposed to do for this? It says solve the equation for the indicated variable. Use a logarithm with the appropriate base. So we're supposed to solve for t, little t, using appropriate, appropriate, log. What do you think the appropriate logarithm is going to be to use here? That 7 to the something is kind of the, 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 the clue, right? We're, I think we're going to use log base 7. No, not right away though, right? Not right away. What, what, how do you want to solve this here? What do you want to do? 
So what I want to do to start with is I want to isolate the 7 to the something. Like that's going to be my opening move here. So this, I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to put the T1 minus T0 over here, 7 to the minus KT, right? And that's going to be equal to T minus T naught. So I, I, I move the left hand side to the right. I kind of flipped, flipped the equation and subtracted something, all right? You guys with me so far? Now to isolate the 7, I divide by T1 minus T naught, right? So 7 to the minus KT is T minus T naught divided by T1 minus T naught. Yeah? And then what? How do we get rid of the 7? What's the natural enemy of, you know, exponential base 7? What's that? Log base. log base. So take log base 7 of both sides, right? So taking log base 7 of both sides gives me minus kt equals to log base 7 of t minus t naught over t1 minus t naught, okay? So I'll take log base 7 of both sides. Or if you like, I'm changing from the exponential form of the equation to the corresponding logarithmic form of the equation is another way we could look at this, right? If we have this exponential equation, we have this corresponding logarithmic equation, right? And then I'm s trying to solve for little t, so one more move and we're done, right? So we got t is equal to, you know, minus 1 over k log base 7 of t minus t naught over t1 minus big t naught. And I, that, that would be the answer I'd give. I'm not sure what they wanted. But yeah, that's what they wanted. You might have a different number other than 7 there, I'm guessing. But does that, does that make sense? Do you guys know what this equation's for? It's actually a very interesting equation. Let's analyze this equation for a second. Let's talk about it. So what happens when you put in t equals to 0 into it? Put time equal to 0 into this formula. What do you get? What is, so you get 7 to the 0. What's 7 to the 0? 7 to the 0 is 1, right? So the formula becomes t0 <coughs> plus t1 minus t0, right? Um, really? Aw. Uh, Come on, book. That's not cool. Oh, fine. Anyway, it is what it is. So it's T1. So T1 is the, I would say T1 is the temperature at time zero. All right, so T1 is, this is the initial temperature. Big T is for temperature. What happens if we take about, now here's a notation that you're not supposed to know about, but I'm going to use it anyway. Limit as t goes to infinity of, of t of t, what happens there? So if we think about time going to infinity, if this k is positive, what happen, what's the graph of e to the minus kt for k positive? Well, it looks like this. See, for t very large, e to the minus kt gets really, really small. That, that term goes to zero. And so what that means is in this formula, this, this second term dies off. And what you're left with is t zero. So this is actually what you'd call room temperature. So what, what you're looking at here is actually the solution to Newton's law of cooling which applies to things like, oh, I don't know, you got a cup of coffee or something, right? And maybe it's got, you know, maybe it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Maybe 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you leave it in a room that's 70 degrees, what happens? It cools, right? Yeah. And this is the kind of formula it follows. So for the particular circumstances of the room and how the coffee cup is coupled to the air in the room and how it cools, 
you'll get different um, K, which will describe the rate. But this is basically how the temperature decays of objects. This is Newton's laws of cooling. It, it, it simply says that um, the rate of change of the, the cooling is proportional to the difference in temperature between the object and the, and the room temperature. And, and this is the formula that comes from it. So that's the meaning of this homework problem. If you're Anyway, obviously I don't test on that. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's work another here. Let's go back to the equation ones that are a little bit tricky. Uh, how about this one? How about this one? This is number 25. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can knock this one out. This is my example eight, which is number 25. And here we face log base 3 of x squared minus 9, all right, minus log base 3 of x plus 3, all right, equals to 1. Can we solve this? What's the solution set? So how do we, how do we deal with this here? There's a few different paths to go down here. <coughs> so you guys get me started. Which path do you want to send me down? Rewrite it as log base 3 x squared minus 9 divided by x plus 3. Ah, uh, we could, sure, we could go down that path. Why not? <laughs> you know, there are many paths you can go down, but in the end, we're still on the road that we're on. Let's see here, divided by x plus 3, something like that, equal to 1. That's what you want to do? I'll sure I'll buy that. Uh, hey, we can factor, right? x squared minus 9, how's that factor? X plus 3. And, yeah. Oh yeah, but before we do that, we can cancel out x plus 3, right? So we've got log base 3 of x minus 3 equals to 1. Now you say take, raise both sides, exponentiate both sides, base 3, right? So I can do like this, 3 to the, 3 to the, okay, so this gives me x minus 3 equals, well, 3. x equals 2? 6, apparently, right? Now we should check, right? We should check, just to be safe. Does it work? Plug six back in here. Um, 36 minus nine, that's, that's positive. Okay, that's fine. Um, six plus three is nine, that's positive. We're inputting positive numbers into the logs, we're okay. I haven't somehow tricked us into getting a wrong solution. The other way you could have done this, right, <clears throat> is to factor, if you'd factored at the start, right, See, the other way you could have done this would have been to like, instead of, the other way we could have done this would have been like, well, that's log base 3 of x plus 3 times x minus 3 minus log base 3 of x plus 3, right? And if, we d if we'd factored that to start with, then we could have used the property of logs to break that up. See that? And then what would have happened was, would have been, these would have canceled. Wait a minute, these would have canceled. My bad. These would have canceled and we would have been left with log base three of x minus three equal to, uh, equal to one, right? All roads lead to the same log base 3 of x minus 3 equal to 1, but, you know, is it, is it easier to factor it first and use the property of logs? Is it easier to, I don't know, like, I, I think there's a danger. Well, it, it's fine. It, it is what it is. <coughs> I think the, 
you know, your, your initial choice was a good choice. I think it's fine. I don't think really my way is better. It's just another way, you know? Let's see here. Let's do another one. Another one. Where was I? Oh, yes. 26 is good. Something like the natural log of 3x plus 5 minus the natural log of x equals to the natural log of 4. How are we going to solve this? And lest I forget, here's example 10. Here we're facing natural log of e to the x minus 6 natural log of e equals natural log of e to the 8. Man, example 10 <laughs> in number 27 in the homework, that's a, that's a very friendly problem. <laughs> this, one is, this one's stupidly easy compared to the other ones. But anyway, <clears throat> what should we do here? I, I think I pretty much have to use property 3 for the log, right? I have to make this the log of the quotient. Like that, yeah? But here's the thing. The log is a one-to-one -one function, right? So we could use the one-to-one -one property for log, or if you like, we could take the exponential of both sides. However you want to think about it, and this implies that 3x plus 5 over x is equal to 4. How do you solve that? Multiply both sides by x, right? So this is, we're going back to what, like week 1 or week 2? I forget. Like this was on test 1, right? This kind of problem. 3x plus 5 equal to 4x, which gives me 5 is equal to, x. Uh, okay, so 5 is equal to x. <laughs> okay. And does that work? Well, if you go back to the original equation, I think we're okay, right? <clears throat> How about that next one? Oh, so yeah, you're like, this is, this is literally just x, right? Natural log of e is what? It's what? It's 1, right? So this is 1. And this is what? Natural log of e to the 8 is, is 8. Yeah? So what we have is we've got x minus 6 equals to 8, also known as x is equal to 14. So it, it, that, that is, uh, it, its bark is worse than its, its bite, right? I mean, it looks worse than it is for sure. All right, let me make up one for us to try. Example 11. Everything has been too pretty up till now. We need to work something uglier. So here we go. Suppose you come, ag come up against, um, oh, I don't know, log base 3 of x squared plus 4x um, <laughs> well, I gotta think about this for a second, guys. Ah, plus 30, okay. Equals to 2. Can we solve this? I mean, I'm not sure. I just made it up. Okay, let's find out. 
So how, how, how would you solve something like that? What do you, what do, you do to this equation? How do we get rid of the logarithm? We should do what? We should take both sides and exponentiate them with respect to the base, in this case, 3, right? So we take this to the 3 to the that, and 3 to the that, right? And when I do that, by definition, I get back x squared plus 4x plus 30 equals to 9. Right? Are there any solutions to that? I don't know. Let's find out, right? So that's x squared plus 4x plus 21 equals to 0. Now, all of the problems that we've worked on, I've taken them from my lab, right? And the my lab problems are artificially easy. They're always based on factoring, which is like, duh. You know, like this kind of factoring, right? All of the factoring that comes from the MyLab problems, it's all like elementary factoring. It's never, hardly ever is there never a 2 out front. We didn't need completing the square. It's the most basic kind of factoring that you find in these problems, right? But in the real world of possible problems, there are also problems where the factoring is ugly, like this one. Yeah. Three squared is nine. Mm -hmm. So, in the in in the world of uglier problems, we have to fall back on the things we learned earlier this semester, right? Complete the square. So this is x plus two quantity squared, right? So I have to subtract the square, which is two squared is four. And so what I got is I've got x plus two quantity squared equals two. I mean. For what it's worth, if I bring it to the other side, I've got what? Uh, minus 17, right? Which gives me x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of minus 17, which means that my solutions here are minus 2 plus or minus i root 17. Um, and that means no real solution. So if this was a problem in the homework, it's not. But if it was, the answer would be the solution set is empty, right? Let me change this problem ever so slightly so the solution's interesting. It's not hard. Oops. I almost did it again. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I, I, it's not my goal to kick the students. Um, not like, oh man, okay, well that wasn't, I didn't lose much, right? So 3x plus 5 equals to 4x, which then gives us 5 is equal to 4x minus 3x, which gives us x equals to 5. There we go, all right. That was that problem. So the final problem for today, I think, oh, I better hurry. Um, <laughs> would be this one, example 12. If I instead had log base 3 of x squared plus 4x, you know, plus 1 equals to 2. This, I would raise both sides to the power 3, I would get x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals to 9, which would give me x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals to 0, which would factor to x plus 2 squared minus 12 equal to 0 which would then factor to, which would give me solutions, x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 12. Now the question is, are those both defined? And actually, yes, if you plug them in, um, you get, you know, you get nice things in here. If you, you get, this makes this positive. And, um, if you plug that, if you plug those values into this, they make this quadratic equal to 9, which means log base 3 of 9 is 2, all right? So my point to you is it doesn't have to be no solution. It could just, that could happen. But anyway, sorry to hurry on the most complicated example today, but we out of time. <laughs>